In this video, I'll provide a stock review of Microsoft and what I personally look for when evaluating potential stock purchases. In the first section of the video, I'll run through what Microsoft does and how they make money. Then I'll look at some of the numbers and metrics that I find useful in evaluating companies, as well as looking at the dividend history, revenue, net income, and cash flow. And finally, I'll offer my own personal thoughts and opinions on the stock. Microsoft are one of the world's largest tech companies and sells software, computing devices, cloud systems, and other services to consumers and businesses. They report their financial performance based on the following three segments. Productivity and business processes, intelligent cloud, and more personal computing. Before I delve into the financials, I'm going to run through each segment and discuss how each one operates and generates revenue. Starting with productivity and business processes. This segment is made up of a further four areas. Office commercial, office consumer, LinkedIn, and Dynamics business solutions. Office commercial and office consumer is the sale of products in the Microsoft Office 365 range to businesses and individuals. So this is software such as Excel, Word, PowerPoint, SharePoint, Teams, and Skype. Next is LinkedIn, the social network that focuses on professional networking and career development. LinkedIn makes its money through talent solutions, marketing solutions, and premium subscriptions. In other words, by selling advertising, recruitment services, and membership privileges. Microsoft bought LinkedIn in 2016 for $26.2 billion. And buying up other companies does feature very heavily in Microsoft's strategy. And this is something that I'll really drill down on later on in the video. Dynamics Business Solutions is the sale of cloud-based business applications that combine components of Customer Relationship Management, CRM, and Enterprise Resource Planning, ERP, along with productivity applications and artificial intelligence tools. This is basically software to help businesses. The next segment to look at is Intelligent Cloud. For those that don't know what a cloud business is, every website or web application needs some space on the internet. To host those web pages, you need huge memory storage devices called servers that run 24-7. In a nutshell, this segment is where Microsoft effectively rent out online storage space to companies and individuals. This segment contains server products and cloud services, as I've just mentioned, and enterprise services. This is basically Microsoft support services and also their consulting services. And the last segment is more personal computing. This segment comprises of Windows. This is the sale and licensing of the Windows operating system. And Windows operating systems are used on 75% of all desktop computers around the world. Devices including Microsoft Service and PC accessories. Gaming, this is mainly the Xbox consoles, plus content, games, and services. And search advertising. So this is display advertising and Bing search advertising. So those are the segments that generate revenue for Microsoft. But what does the revenue mix look like? This may be surprising, but as we can see here, Microsoft's Intelligent Cloud segment brings in the most revenue, followed by more personal computing, then productivity and business processes. For me personally, I'd always just associated Microsoft with personal computers, office software, and Xboxes. So doing my research on the company and discovering that they have a cloud segment which brings in the majority of the revenue was a real eye-opener. Now let's take a look through the numbers that I find useful in evaluating stocks. Microsoft has a current dividend yield of 0.91%. Last year's dividend yield averaged at 0.89%. So there is a slight increase in yield year on year. This might seem like a low dividend yield to add to a dividend portfolio, but I will touch on this in more detail later on in the video. Microsoft have increased their annual dividend over the last 20 consecutive years. Over the past five years, the average dividend per share growth rate was 9.4% per year. 
And over the last 10 years, the average dividend per share growth rate was 13%. So we are seeing a little slowing down of the growth rate, but to have a dividend growing by around 10% each year on average is still very good in my opinion. The payout ratio is currently 24.63%. This just shows the proportion of earnings a company pays shareholders in dividends and is expressed as a percentage of the company's total earnings. The lower the percentage, the better, and I tend to consider around 80% as being a high ratio. So 25% is incredible. And if we look at the payout ratio history, we can see that the payout ratio has been very consistent. The average ratio over this period is 23%, which I feel gives the dividends so much room to grow. Now what stands out to me are the spikes during 2015 and 2018, which I wanted to delve deeper into for an explanation. The payout ratio formula is dividends divided by net income. So as we know that the dividends have been increasing, we can conclude that the net income must have dropped for those years. And looking into Microsoft's company accounts for the answer, I found a note relating to a one-off 13.7 billion tax cuts and job act charge, which explains that drop. And again, looking into the annual report in 2015, I saw a 7.5 billion impairment charge, plus a 2.5 billion charge associated with company restructuring. So both of these will have reduced the net income. An impairment is basically an accounting treatment where a company reduces the value of an asset that it considers damaged, unusable or worth less. So in this instance, Microsoft have decided that their phone hardware isn't worth as much as they previously accounted for. Therefore, Microsoft have felt the need to reduce the value of those assets on the balance sheet to reflect this, which in turn also decreases net income. This is what's called a non-cash expense so they don't actually lose physical cash as a result of this. The market cap of Microsoft is $2.055 trillion, which makes it the second largest company in the world by market cap, just behind Apple. Personally, I hold a lot of these large blue chip companies in my dividend portfolio, as they tend to be established, secure businesses, and I feel that they're less risky than smaller cap companies and new startups. Microsoft has a share price of $270.44 and this puts it towards the lower end of the 52 week price range. The current price does seem to be attractive to me when you compare it to the 50 day average of $282.73 and the 200 day average of $303.04. So now let's look at the yearly dividend history of the company. We can see a really nice steady upward trend where the dividend has increased from 32 cents in 2005 to $2.30 in 2021. This is an increase of 618.75%. I just want to address the dividend yield as some people might think that this low yield isn't worth it. After all, we'd be getting less than a dollar for every $100 invested. But I want to focus on the potential yield on cost. The average dividend increase over the last five years was 9.4% per year. We do need to remember that past performance isn't always indicative of future performance, but if Microsoft were to carry on this rate of dividend increase, we could build an attractive yield on cost over the long term. This graph shows what the dividend payment could become if it carries on growing at 9.4% per year. So we can see that it could develop into quite a nice amount. And now looking at this graph, assuming that we bought one share right now for $270, we can see what our yield on cost could become in the future. Again, I just want to reiterate that past performance isn't a guarantee of future performance, but this is a strategy I employ for my investments, and I'm always looking to target companies with a growing dividend to build a nice yield on cost. Businesses that can consistently pay dividends and also increase them over the years, can produce a considerable cash flow for shareholders over the long term. Now let's have a look at the chart showing Microsoft's revenue, net income and cash flow. While I always like to look at the dividend history of a company, I think it's also important to look at the company's ability to generate income, 
as the earnings and cash flow of the company are key to future dividend payments. The amounts in this graph are just incredible. The numbers here are in the billions, and we can see another nice steady upward trend in revenue, with the last revenue total being around $192 billion. What I also find amazing is that there wasn't any decline in revenue during the pandemic, as I've seen with nearly every other company. Then looking at the yellow net income line, this follows the revenue line quite nicely, but we do see a dip during 2018. Even with revenue increasing, the net income starts to decline for the year. As the formula for net income is revenue minus expenses, there must have been some significant expenditure during this period. And as I mentioned earlier, Microsoft's company accounts explain that this relates to a one-off $13.7 billion Tax Cuts and Job Act charge, which explains that drop. If we also look at the profit margin of Microsoft, we can also see a really pleasing trend, where the margin percentage looks to be steadily increasing. Profit margins can vary from industry to industry and size of business, but for context, a 20% margin is generally considered good, 10% average and 5% low. So for Microsoft's margin to be 38% currently, and averaging 27% for the period shown on the graph, is excellent to see as an investor. Now looking at the orange cash flow line, we see a similar theme, with a nice steady upward trend. Remember that this line represents positive cash flow into the business, and the latest number is around $63 billion mark. What I also like to look at is a company's cash position at the end of each financial year, just to see what the company has in reserve, should they ever need to draw upon it. Looking at this graph, we can see that Microsoft's cash balance is extremely healthy, showing a $130 billion cash reserve at the end of 2021. This is extremely bullish for me, as Microsoft can do two things with this cash. Number one, reinvest into growing the business, i.e. through expansion, acquisition, or organic growth. Or two, use the reserves to return cash to shareholders, either through share buybacks or through increasing dividend payments. So what is my opinion on Microsoft? I only recently added Microsoft to my portfolio in January 2022, as the initial dividend yield first put me off. I feel this was a mistake, and it's something that I discussed in a recent video. Never make investment decisions solely on stock metrics alone. Yes, Microsoft's current dividend yield is under 1%, so I'd be getting less than $1 back for every $100 that I invest. And being a UK investor, I'm also subject to a 15% withholding tax on top of that. But for me, there's just no escaping that Microsoft is an incredible company. The balance sheet is a fortress, the cash flow is immense, the revenue keeps on rising, margins continue to trend upwards, and annual dividends grow steadily. In my opinion, it is still an amazing dividend stock, as the strong forward growth rates more than compensate for the low starting yield. Microsoft has diversified business segments that many of us are familiar with and use on a daily basis. As an accountant myself, I can appreciate that without Microsoft Office, in particular Excel, the business world just wouldn't function. Microsoft continue to acquire smaller tech companies to add to their diversified products and services. They're like a giant whale, gobbling up all the other smaller fish in the ocean. To illustrate this, here are the acquisitions that Microsoft have made over the last 10 years alone. There are 123. You can see a real diverse blend of industries, which will only enhance Microsoft's current offering. I'm just going to briefly discuss a few of those acquisitions that I feel are really smart moves. The first one being Mojang, which Microsoft bought in 2014 for $2.5 billion. Mojang are the Swedish developers behind the famous game Minecraft. Minecraft was released in 2009 and has sold over 238 million copies worldwide, which makes it the number one best-selling video game of all time. 
Another one I'd like to mention is Zenimax Media. Zenimax Media is another smart acquisition in the gaming world. Microsoft bought them in 2020 for $7.5 billion, and was another step to increasing their presence in the gaming industry. Zenimax Media was the parent company of Bethesda Softworks, a firm that owned eight game studios with several best-selling offerings, including The Elder Scrolls and Fallout. When making the announcement for the deal, Microsoft underlined that gaming was the fastest growing entertainment form and would generate annual revenues of $200 billion in the coming years. And finally, just want to mention Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard is the biggest purchase that Microsoft have ever made, when they paid $68.7 billion for the gaming studio behind many of the world's most popular video games. After the deal closed, Microsoft became the third largest gaming company in the world in terms of revenue, only behind titans like Sony and Tencent. Activision Blizzard owns popular games like Call of Duty, Warcraft, Diablo, Overwatch and Candy Crush. And in 2021, Activision generated a net revenue of $8.8 billion. So for me, these acquisitions in the gaming industry are only going to add to Microsoft's incredible growth well into the future. In my portfolio, I own a few long-term dividend stocks that are my forever holds. These are stocks that I never intend on selling, and I would put Microsoft in this category. I just find it hard to bet against them for all the reasons that I've discussed in the video. I see this company as a long-term hold, but only currently own four shares of the company. I do want to build up a large position over the long term, as I keep dollar cost averaging through the months. Just a reminder that this isn't investment advice, and you should always do your own research and due diligence before making any investment purchases. Now that you've seen my analysis on the stock, what are your thoughts on Microsoft? Do you own any shares in the company? Has anything surprised you from what I've said? I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope that you found this video interesting and informative, and I hope it's given you inspiration and ideas for your own personal finances. If you have, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss any future videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.